Welcome everyone, my name is Rose, and today we're going to be doing a look smacking tier list. Why the fuck did I do that? Okay, anyways, my name is Roars, but you already know that. And today we're gonna to be doing the Looks Maxing tier list. Now, this is not any ordinary tier list. It may as well be a Looks Maxing iceberg because there is gonna be so many new things in this video that you never would have previously thought existed. And some of them, uh, well, let's just say you probably wish they never existed. But nevertheless, I'm going to leave no stone unturned and guarantee to rot your brain with autism. So without wasting any more of your time, let's get into it. Starting off with the C tier, okay, the Cope tier. The first one in this tier is supplement maxing. Now about supplements, to keep things short, unlike my video that was six minutes long, the supplements that I definitely think are worth taking, and that was actually the top comment on my supplement video, is beta carotene. Now that is not the reason why I'm a bronze to God. We will get to that point later in the video. But essentially how beta carotene can work is that essentially people are born with a certain amount of melanin and a certain amount of carotenoids. And obviously if you have a low amount of beta carotene, it can cause your skin to bring on a more ghoulish and undead appearance. And by supplementing beta carotene, it can actually give you a beta carotene glow. Now, other ones that are also very important is obviously vitamin D. Due to the modern lifestyle, pretty much no one goes outside. That includes me. And vitamin D is going to heavily boost your testosterone levels, which is, well, the elixir of life for men. Next is a cheeky one. It's called glucosamine. Glucosamine extends your spine and, well, makes you about half an inch taller. Creatine is also a must-have. Pretty much by supplementing creatine, you're giving yourself free muscle and added performance in the gym. And not only that, you get more brain clarity, which brings me into the next supplement, which is is L-tyrosine. The recommended limit of L-tyrosine is about 400 to 500 milligrams per serve. I had about 1,000 milligrams. So if I'm a little bit jumpy and jittery throughout this video, I'm just fucking really zoned in on what I'm saying. That is the reason. It's amazing for performance in the gym, but more or less just a precursor to dopamine, which is going to provide you with more brain clarity and focus. Enough about supplements, because Jesus Christ, my fan base is probably sick of hearing about supplements at this point. We are moving into lip maxing. Now, lip maxing is really going to constitute having big and full lips. If you naturally don't have big and full lips, don't worry about it. You can always get lip fillers or provide something that, I guess, well, there is a reason for this being in the coat tier, volley for line. Now, I've actually tried volley for line myself and uh, yeah, the results I had with it were pretty much negligible and I didn't actually use it on my lips. I was using it more on my tear throughs in my eyes. But essentially the theory behind putting volley for line on a certain surface is to regain fat volume. Now you're probably thinking, oh, why would you want fat on your face? Well, obviously you don't want fat around your cheeks, but you do need fat in certain areas such as your under eyes to prevent hollowness. And well, funny enough, your lips are actually made of fat and water. So having a little bit extra fat on your lips can go a long way. So if you're willing to drop $80 on volume for line, then by all means, go ahead. But there are no guarantees that it will work. But what will 100% work is getting lip fillers, which will last you anywhere to six to 10 months. But it's really only something that females tend to do. But if you're someone with more a pretty boy archetype, you could definitely benefit from doing this. Just uh, don't end up in jail because then you'll be a blowjob candidate for big brolic black men. Now to keep your lips uh, nice and fresh for or BBC, I mean, um, kissing women. You should always exfoliate your lips. Now I tend to do this about every two days and doing circular motions around your lips. So that way it will wash away the dead skin cells and leave your lips nice and plump. Now I know that was an extremely short tier, but we are moving on to the bloat tier, AKA the B tier. Now, like I mentioned before, we are moving on to the first one from the bloat tier and that is melanin maxing. Now this one only really goes out to my Twilight co-stars, but if you were extremely pale, as I damn well know myself, you are going to have a hard time covering up any blemishes on your skin. And on top of that, you're almost always gonna give away a sickly appearance and definitely refer to people as either goth, emo, or I don't know, a vampire. Trust me, I've heard it all, it's not fun. But do not go too far with melanin maxing because if you're a pale cell such as myself, but you have dark hair, that is a great thing because contrast is key. Just not too much contrast because me with that fake tan honestly looks like I've got a black and white filter on. 24-7. In most cases, people will benefit from just a slight tan, but you really have to decipher whether you're going to benefit from this or not. So for example, I have hazel eyes and just saying there's nothing wrong with being ethnic, but if I were to end up tanning a little bit too far, I would end up looking like a completely different race. But if you're someone with blue eyes, you can go full wham with this. To darken your skin, you can use fake tan, which is what I use, but uh, I have to say this process is fucking abysmal. I fake tan about every three days or so. Not only does it irritate my skin, but well, the tan runs out. And a short time as well. And to be frank, it's almost like I'm doing a cycle, not that type of cycle, but more of like a tanning cycle. I start out really dark and then end up 
really pale. So if you want to look like the same human pretty much every single day, there is such a thing called melanotan, which is a well-known peptide and has been researched thoroughly. You can do your own bidding here and find it if you need it. I am not trying to get my channel banned, but just do your own research on this peptide because the peptide itself is safe. But if you're going to get it from some random source, then uh, be prepared for anything to happen because you do have to inject the stuff or you can do a safe option, which is getting a nasal spray, which is more expensive. But if you're a pussy, you can do it. Okay, that's enough of melanin maxing. Moving on to style maxing. Style maxing is probably one of the most overlooked things on this list. And it's really just due to pretty much everyone looking at themselves as the stock. And what I mean by that is when you're looks maxing, you're relatively looking at yourself as a stock using like a car as an analogy. And the clothing is more like the exterior and the accessories. So like fluoro colored lights in your car and then you subwoofer in the back. It doesn't make the actual stock better. It just gives it a little pizzazz. Is that even a word? I don't know. So you really got to sort out what your vibe is. Now this one was pretty easy for me because well, I have black hair and a decent amount of contrast like I said before. So just going for the all black vibe really suits me. Also another thing, you can get a little bit of jewelry as so. And if you're a white person such as me, silver is always going to suit you the most. But if you're someone who's more dark skinned, a gold color is gonna suit you best within jewelry. Obviously you can be either one and choose whatever the fuck you want, but this is usually just what looks best. Now I must say, I cannot provide the best advice in style maxing. So you might have to do some more research on a YouTuber who actually knows what the fuck they're talking about. But in terms of gym clothing, I am an expert. So that's essentially what I'm gonna advise you on today. I'm gonna list some clothing items that are essentials for the gym and then I'll let you decide afterwards. Number one, a compression shirt. Now it's a bit of a no-brainer. It compresses your arms, makes you look massive. And for a hard gainer like me, who's pretty much always lean year round and finds it hard to put on weight, this is an essential. Number two, a wife beater. So you can get this in black or white. I tend to like to use both, but you can choose which one you like. Number three, a pair of long pants. I tend to buy all my gym clothes off of Gymshark. I am not sponsored, but I wish I was. And just a disclaimer, there are no sponsorships in this video, so you don't need to skip anything. Now as a rule of thumb, you should probably only buy black or white clothing since they are neutral colors but if you're feeling a little bit risky or you just feel like you have a bit of a more fashion sense than I do which is probably plausible then you can go for something that is more like a red tone or something that's blue just make sure the colors match and you have color harmony so please don't be like wheat waffles and wear a green polo with blue pants no hate to you wheat waffles of course but for someone who's black pilled you need to represent the community a little bit better but I am a firm believer that literally every single person should have something that's high quality so essentially what I did is look up on the incident for inspiration and the person I used for inspiration was Sean O'Pryor because like we're basically brothers I mean look at us I'm obviously taking the piss but I really like his outfit when he was mogging Homer Simpson to Valhalla because it looks very sophisticated and high class now moving on to the next one and lord knows how much I'll talk about this one and that is D-Bloat Maxing now if you're a fan of my channel chances are you've heard me talk about D-Bloat Maxing about a million times but I'm going to repeat it to you the one millionth and one th time <laughs> Alright, let's see if I can do a speed run of talking about deloading. Alright, three, two, one. Okay, so basically there is sodium, and sodium you're gonna have about 10,000 milligrams. 10,000 milligrams of sodium is basically gonna bloat the fuck into your face. So, bloating your face, basically to debloat your face, all you need is potassium chloride. Now you're gonna have a. Now you're gonna need three to one ratio of potassium chloride. So essentially what this means is that if you consume 3,000 milligrams of sodium in one sitting, so you get a guzz from my Gomez, basically what you need to do is get about 9,000 milligrams of potassium chloride. <gasps> now essentially what potassium chloride does is flush the water out of your system. Because if you have excess water, basically what happens is it bloats the fuck out of your face and it causes your body to have an illusion of more fat on your face. <gasps> Long story short, don't eat a lot of fast food, eat healthy, consume more potassium. Symmetry maxing. Now, I have actually gotten a lot of comments on my videos saying, Rawls, how did you fix your fucking subhuman asymmetrical face? And to that, I say, Thanks. No, but really though, I tend to have a different jaw structure on two sides of my face, which actually constitutes me as a subhuman and it's completely over for me. But in all seriousness, the way I reduced my asymmetrical jaw is through chewing on the left side. All throughout puberty, I tend to chew on my right side, which actually caused my jaw to take on a better structure on this side compared to this side. So the autistic breakdown of this is that my ramus is actually longer on this side and I'm guessing my mandible as well. But this is actually hard to notice because I have chewed with my masseter on this left side and the masseter is actually the muscle that inserts on your jaw. So I'm going to tense this muscle and you're going to see exactly what it is. It is obviously a lot more pronounced on this side though. But what can you do? No one's perfect. Now this is going to sound like a heavily coped claim from me considering my face is, well, I guess asymmetrical to some degree. But literally every single person on planet Earth is asymmetrical. I'm talking PSL gods, subhumans, all of the likes. And well, if you don't believe me, simply all you have to do is just grab your phone, take a photo of yourself, and then flip the image. Congratulations, I have just provided you with body dysmorphia. But it's all good though, because if you continue to subscribe to my channel, I'm going to give you even more. Now realistically, the only time that asymmetry is going to have a massive effect on your face is actually 
flashy when the eyes are placed higher or lower than the other. And this is something that you actually can't change. Bradley Cooper is a good example of this. But funny enough, even with his asymmetrical eyes, you still can't really tell. Because let's be real, if you're talking in real life when you're in motion, no one's going to really notice any of your asymmetries. That is, until someone takes a photo of you. And then you realize you're a subhuman. God, I really love that word, don't I? Oh. The next tier, the Ascend tier, also known as the A tier. First on the A tier is neck maxing. Now, I actually did make a video on neck maxing, and um, this video was before I had any knowledge of looks maxing in general, so excuse the pooey facial hair and the god awful mullet. I mean, what was I thinking? Jesus Christ. Ah, we live and we learn. Now, with neck maxing, essentially what I did within those seven days is get about a 20 kilo plate, or I think it was 10, either one, doesn't matter, lying on a bench, which doesn't look like much, but when you're actually doing this in the gym, it feels like you're momentarily acquiring sleep apnea and you are literally losing oxygen in your brain second by second. That's obviously an extremified version of what I really mean. But if you do go overboard with this, you might need a sleep apnea machine. So to know if you haven't gone overboard with this is to reach at least 80% of your jaw's circumference. So I'll use myself as an example here because well, you can see my neck and I would say my neck is probably about the perfect width. And no, that's not me just glazing myself. That's because I actually trained my neck to reach this width. Most people, you probably get to this width naturally, of course. That is if you have some meat on your bones. But for me, obviously, I was an absolute emaciated piece of shit, and I understood that adding meat to my bones required effort. So for all my fellow wanklets out there, definitely try your neck, because sometimes I can just look at people and I can just be like, oh, you just got such like a, a malleable neck. You know what I mean? Like I can just grab it like that and just squeeze it. Don't be one of those guys. Now, I have actually gotten compliments for my posture. <laughs> I know. I was pretty chuffed too. That actually wasn't because my posture was good. It was because I was standing next to a girl who was five foot ten. <laughs> One second. Okay, so this overpriced piece of fabric is known as a posture corrector. Now, a little tutorial on how this thing works. Basically, you're gonna put your hand through one hole and then the other. That's what she said. And you're just gonna bring it all the way around you like a backpack and then pull the straps in. Got a lava strap on, and you are on your way to getting good posture. Now, essentially, what this does is keep your back in line. Pretty much, just lifts up your shoulders, pulls them back, and keeps it there. Now, this is more of an extreme way to correct your posture, and it's not really something that's a long form thing. It's more or less just to help your mind adapt to having the correct posture. Now, funny enough, the people who actually need this the most are people who are tall like me, because if you're a short king, you damn well know the importance of good posture. And even me sometimes, when I'm standing around my mate Nelson, who's about six foot four, I even notice myself just standing up a little bit straighter than last time, because how dare he height mog me. But height actually isn't the most important thing for posture. It's actually just giving you more of a degree of perceived confidence. And to be honest, you're just going to look like you're more in charge. I mean, have you ever seen someone with forward head and neck posture? Do you ever look at that person and think, yes, this person is competent and capable? It's usually the complete opposite. Versus when you see someone else who has their shoulders back, tucked in, and their chest is out, you know they couldn't give a less of a shit when anyone thinks of them. Or they're just an egotistical cunt, just like me. Now, gut maxing. I'm not talking about your mum's guts that I was in last night, but the type of gut I am talking about is your own. Because your gut is going to constitute your mental health, your physical health, literally anything. What you put into your body is, yeah, it leaves me speechless because it's just everything. Now, for the majority of people here that are watching this video, you probably delve into a little bit of fast food from time to time, which is all good from time to time. We all got to cope once or twice. But if you're someone who's eating junk food on the regular, chances are that your gut is absolutely fucked. And to put it bluntly, your farts probably stink like absolute shit. Oh, oh shit, but even worse than normal shit. And this is actually a sign of bad gut health. But there are obviously ways you can improve your gut health. One being obvious, not eating junk food. Two, fasting is actually shown to improve gut health because it can help clear out the system. And taking probiotics. In Australia, you have these little things called like Yakults. I used to drink them as a kid and they always tasted pretty funny, but those are actually shown to improve probiotics in your system. And it's great if you have bad gut health. Also, another thing if you have bad gut health is going to a doctor and getting it checked. Or just getting your blood work checked in general. Chances are you might be close to liver failure by this point if you live of junk food. I remember me and my friend falling for the dirty bulk meme back in like 2020 watching a Dylan McKnight video. And we saw, wait, what? I can go to the gym, eat whatever I want. This is perfect. So that's exactly what we did. We lift heavy weights, went to Macca's after the gym, and then lo and behold, you're a bloated, sloppy mess. But it's not just the outside that makes you look like that. And it's probably another reason why when you look at a fat person, you instinctively get a disgusting feeling in your stomach. Oh, no, no one else, just me? 
Okay. It's because a person's outward appearance is a direct indicator of their sloppy inner health, which is why I've taken on the looks maxing niche so seriously. It's because in my opinion, if you don't get your looks right, you can't get anything wrong. It is a precursor to everything in your life. And don't be mistaken, I'm not looks maxing for women. I'm sure you guys aren't looks maxing for women either. It is more just for quality of life. And I'm sorry to go off the rails here, but looks is life. And like another wise man once said, lean is life and you can't be lean with a bad gut moving on to the next one and it is teeth maxing trust me there is nothing more charming than a chad smile and this is probably one of the easiest things to look smacks as well using one of those high smile things or just go to your local dentist and then ask to get your teeth whitened which they will provide the sources to do so also if you have a gap between your teeth you can get that closed in with invisalign and something that i'm actually going to do in the near future is use invisalign to actually widen the arch of my teeth because the science behind a good smile is if you have gaps on the outer corners of your teeth so in between your mouth, as I do, it causes a more awkward appearance. Versus if your teeth fill out your entire mouth, it gives a much more charming appearance. An example of a perfect smile is Margot Robbie. Absolute giga Stacy, by the way. And if you don't have perfect teeth, you can definitely make that a reality with, well, money. <laughs> yes, if you're going to start looks maxing, you need to earn money. Don't just sit there behind your crusty gaming chair watching this video and sit there and rot. If you're looks maxing, you're also on self-improvement. Just remember that. My channel didn't start out as a looks maxing channel. It was actually a self-improvement channel. But after getting interested in how to max out aesthetics, I sort of just let the looks maxing niche take over. But don't be mistaken, self-improvement is key. And if you're watching my channel, this is a key reminder to get a fucking job. Now, I understand it's not exactly easy nowadays, but you have no excuse to not actively pursue a job if you're currently not working. And the last thing for teeth, which yeah, we're talking about teeth, not money, I know, is getting veneers. This is a lot of money, but if you get them done right, it's absolutely worth it. Just don't get them too good because if they're too white and too straight and too porcelain, they just look a little bit too fake. And then you just look like a poser. So if you're gonna get veneers and go to Turkey, get them done right. Oh damn, no way. <laughs> Hygiene maxing, who would have thought? This one's extremely important for my nihilistic black billets. But essentially what hygiene maxing is, is going to take a shower at least once a day. Also, there's this miraculous thing called deodorant. It smells pretty good. Oh yes, and uh, just like I said before, probably should have incorporated this into teeth maxing and it's actually brushing your teeth. So yeah, unless you're trying to get natural grills, please do us a favor and brush your teeth. And also scrape your tongue because there is probably a fuck ton of bacteria on your tongue. And trust me, if you're going to get to the point where you actually kiss a girl, I know it's crazy. It's almost alien to me as well at this point. Then the number one thing you need to do is scrape your tongue or at least buy some gum beforehand. It's probably a good idea. Moving on to the next one and it is sleep maxing. Now essentially what constitutes this point is no sleep, no life. Please do not fall victim to the Sigma male, Alpha, Bruce Wayne, Batman, Ryan Gosling mindset and please sleep because you're not going to get shit done if you sleep four to six hours. And I get it, it's like, oh, I'll sleep when I'm dead. It's like, yeah, congratulations, mate. The way you're going, you're probably gonna die in 30 odd years, anyways. So, if you wanna be more productive, more focused, and have more brain clarity, you need to sleep. I average probably like nine hours a night, and this is perfect for me. I talk to a lot of people that pretty much don't sleep at all, and I just don't get it in all honesty. Because if you're not sleeping enough, you're in an unoptimal state. And I wouldn't be surprised if this contributed to such a fast muscle growth that I've had. When I started lifting, I was actually in lockdown during COVID, it was around 2020. And during this time, I didn't have school, I didn't have anything going on. All I knew was sleep eat, repeat, which meant I was sleeping up to 10 hours a night. And not only did I gain muscle, but I actually gained height during this process as well, because I just had so much time for my body to grow. I was in a calorie surplus. I was getting more sleep than I needed. And I shot up from five foot 10 to six foot two and also gained around 50 pounds in that process. If you want to give your body fuel to grow, but not only just feel like a fucking beast, mate, just sleep. It's natural steroids, quite literally. Moving on to the next one, and it is hair maxing. Now, I really want to get across the point with hair maxing that you don't always have to go all out with hair. Trust me, as a looks maxing YouTuber, if I wanted to have amazing hair, I would have it. But I understand that balancing the face is more important for the look I'm going for. This is if you're someone with a bigger forehead, you might want to have something that covers the forehead. A good example of this is Ian Somerhalder, who has a ginormous upper third, but covers it with his iconic hairstyle, known as the bed hair hairstyle. <laughs> I actually don't know what it is, but uh, it looks good. Versus if you're someone like me who has more equal facial thirds, you really don't need to go all out in hair and you can get something a little bit more simple. Something that looks a little bit more classic. For me personally, I just went to my barber, showed a photo of Chico Lashowski and then just asked him to cut my hair like that. And voila, there you go. But don't be mistaken, just because short hair suits me doesn't mean long hair won't suit you. A good example of this is also Syrian Psycho, who's also a very good looks maxing influencer. And he has luscious and long hair. I mean, fuck me, he gets me turned on. Now do not 
not fair if the Norwood Reaper has come for you, he can be defeated. It's just going to take a lot and a lot to do it, and maybe a couple of trips to Turkey. But to, to prevent you from going on a plane to Turkey, what you can do is start employing minoxidil and finasteride as soon as you see signs of bolting. A good YouTuber to research for this is More Plates, More Dates, also known as Derek, and he will provide you with the best information when it comes to hair. Now, once you defeat the Norwood Reaper, what you can do to find your best haircut is finding your face shape, which will show you how to equalize your face and make it look more harmonious. Okay, now this next one is perfect. I am wearing Gymshark right now, so you can only guess what it might be. Gym maxing, perfect. Now, me personally, I love going to the gym. In fact, I probably would have already rope maxed if I couldn't have gone to the gym. Now, obviously the gym is massive for mental health, but we are gonna be covering the aesthetics portion of going to the gym first. A short summary on if you want to achieve an aesthetic physique is by targeting these muscles. First one being your shoulders. So for shoulders, I like to do lateral raises, bit of dumbbell shoulder press and rear dot flies. Do not ignore your rear delts. This is what's gonna give you the 3D boulder shoulder look. Then your abs, yes, I know people say they're made in the kitchen, but realistically, they're made in the gym and then revealed in the kitchen. Now, yes, you will have a six pack showing through at a low body fat percentage, but if you wanna have a six pack at an even higher body fat percentage and just make it more visible at any body fat percentage for that matter, then I definitely suggest training abs. Just do not do Russian twists or any twisting motion because that's how you get a blocky waist. And a blocky waist is unesthetic. So what I like to do is more of like a crunching motion and then doing a leg raise. And this will give me the shredded six pack without the unwanted blockage. Now, obviously I touched before, neck is important as well for aesthetics. Then also your chest, which is just natural because you want to have that Superman look and you can't have a Superman look without a massive chest. Then your lats, which is actually going to make your physique look less blocky by giving you wings, just like Red Bull. And then obviously if you have shit genetics and I don't recommend this unless you've trained for like at least 10 years and you haven't gained that much muscle, which is like really like 10 years, you're going to have a good physique by 10 years, no matter what genetics you have, even if it's below average. But if you're in the first percentile, meaning like first to 99th percentile genetics, if you're literally in the first percentile, so if I want to give you an example of muscle building percentiles, I would say Joe Faze is probably in like the 30th percentile or 25th. But then again, he's 6'4 and it takes so long for you to fill out your frame when you're 6'4. And to be honest, the taller you are, the more chances you're probably going to want to hop on gear purely just because it takes so much muscle to fill out a frame like that. Versus if you're 5'6, all you have to do is just look at a dumbbell and then you're on your way. Now this one could have been thrown in the gym maxing tier, but I just wanted to put it in a category of its own just because of how important it is. Frame maxing. Now frame maxing is essentially trying to manipulate the proportions of the body. Now females who are actually gym maxing are pretty much experts at this. They know that an hourglass figure is the key to aesthetics for them. So you will never see women doing any Russian twists or any of the likes, but you will see them doing a lot of legs and a lot of glutes. And also most importantly, a lot of shoulders and a lot of back because it is providing the illusion of making your waist smaller and your shoulders broader. So as a male's perspective to do this, you can do this exercise called the Reeves deadlift. Now this one's a little bit controversial and it's not exactly backed by science, but there has been a lot of proof that this does actually work. Essentially what a Reeves deadlift is, and I have to stand back for this, is by going on each side, deadlifting like this, you're probably gonna have to spread out your arms a little bit longer, and deadlifting as so. Now I know it looks pretty retarded and you know, that's because it does, but this in theory will actually extend your clavicle bones. But essentially what your clavicles are is along your collarbone. Not only that, your clavicles will extend until the ages of 25, which is actually funny enough when the clavicle bone fuses, which is a lot later by the way than your height, for example, which is around 16 to 20. Now, not only are you supposed to broaden the shoulders, but you are supposed to minimize the waist. And how to minimize the waist is obviously what I said before, not doing any twisting motions, but also doing this thing called stomach vacuums. Now, in a previous video that I made a while ago, which is how to get an aesthetic physique, I pretty much broke down on how to do a stomach vacuum, which I will show up on screen right now. Essentially, what you do is blow all the air out of your stomach, pull it in, and now, yes, it's going to be a little bit difficult at first, but after a while, you're going to be an expert. And this is just training your intramuscular abdominal muscles to make sure it keeps everything in nice and tight so that you don't have your stomach protruding out just like Homer Simpson. Now the final tier and the biggest one to date is Slayer tier. Oh boy, here we go. We're starting off with a big one here and it is surgery maxing. Now to get things straight, unlike the old looks maxing niche, you should only really consider surgery if you are a true sub five. Now essentially what I mean by a true sub five is that if you do every single soft max in the book and you don't reach a five, then yeah, you're probably unblessed facially or probably a burn victim or just deformed. So this is in very rare circumstances and you have to be extremely unlucky to reach this. But if that is the case, I feel sorry for you, but I have to warn you of facial harmony. Now, if you are going to be surgery maxing, check
chances are that you might distort your facial harmony. And facial harmony is probably the most important thing on your face. Because yes, you can have good features, but if you don't have good facial harmony and your features don't harmonize with each other, chances are you're just gonna end up looking a bit uncanny. So as an example, this is why people such as Alain Delon and Francisco Lachowski look so good. It's because they have the perfect mix of masculine and feminine features, which gives their face a much more angelic appeal. Not to mention all the facial ratios and all the other autistic shit in the mitts. Now, although if you're a true sub five, you probably shouldn't even be worrying about facial harmony, let's be real. So I would say if you have to, just go ahead with it. Moving on to the next one, and a very important one, is skin maxing. Now I know damn well about skin maxing. It's probably the biggest failure I've had in my entire life. And only up to about now, which I've been on Accutane for over a year now, and still have about 12 capsules left, left on my prescription, I finally have clear skin. Now this was not always the case. I chuck up on screen right now what I used to look like and damn I was a subject. But uh, hey, we can always improve upon our skin. To improve your skin, obviously what I mentioned before, getting on Accutane if you have subhuman skin genetics. Then after you get rid of the acne, start microneedling. Like in my previous video, I mentioned getting the Derminator. You can get pretty much any microneedling device. You can even go into a dermatologist to get this done. But I do suggest getting your at-home kit because it's going to be a lot cheaper. Another thing you can do is called chemical peels, which is pretty much peeling the skin off your face and I don't know, regrowing a new one. Another one I mentioned before again is beta carotene to give yourself that glow and lycopene. So I naturally already have a lot of red undertones so I don't really need to supplement lycopene but lycopene just to like beta carotene is a fruit slash vegetable. So beta carotene comes from carrots and lycopene comes from tomatoes. And then sunscreen, extremely important especially if you always go outside or work a job that's mainly outside. You need to protect your skin from the sun and I'm telling you if you're gonna melanin max and do melanotan even then use sunscreen. You always want to make sure you age gracefully because why would we look max if we only want to be a chad for 10 years straight why not extend that to 20 years 30 years 40 years so that's what we're going to do now something i like to use and i can't believe i'm saying this on camera but to be honest i got zero fucks left to give and that is bb cream i like to use bb cream for two reasons number one is the one i have is an spf 50 plus which is obviously going to protect my skin from the sun just like i listed before and pretty much what it does is just give your skin free collagen and if you don't know what collagen is it essentially is something that gives your skin a youth full glow and covers up any blemishes that you have. So for someone like me who tends to be prone to blemishes because of my acne ridden past, BB cream is a must have. And it probably is for you. I mean, literally anyone can benefit from this stuff. And there's probably a lot more people using this stuff than you know. But hey, I'm the one admitting to it. And now you don't need to wear this stuff every day. You can just use it on special occasions or times when you're going to be outside a lot. Moving on to the next one and probably one of the most brutal ones on this list is height and maxing. Now I'm guessing a lot of people that are watching this video are probably already still going through puberty. So if that is the case, I've got news for you. You can actually artificially boost your height. Now, obviously you can do this naturally through working out, eating a lot of good foods, milk and eggs, but you're not here for any cope, are ya? So don't worry, this cope artist is gonna put down his brush. Growth hormone. Good luck trying to find this stuff for cheap, by the way. But a good example of someone who used growth hormone is Lionel Messi. He was actually allowed to use this because he was constituted as a legal midget. Yes, you heard that right. My guy was a mega man -like. And he was prescribed this from the doctor and my God, it made an effect. My guy grew from like four foot nine to five foot eight and he's the goat along with Ronaldo. Now for this one, I'm just gonna say do your own research. I'm not thoroughly akin to these methods as my growth plates have already closed and I feel like I'm at a pretty good adequate height already at around 6'2". Which moves me onto my closed at growth plate brothers. The things that you can do to improve your height when your growth plates are closed is by supplementing glucosamine, like I said in my previous video, using an inversion tape which I actually have sitting next to me right now. The inversion table is a little bit cope, but pretty much what it does is just reveal your true height, along with stretching, which I stretch rigorously. And if you want something that's a little bit easier, you can wear shoe lifts, but if you think that's a little bit too 40, just buy shoes that give you a little boost. So as an example, off of slebheights.com, the shoes that improve your height the most, I'm pretty sure is the Nike Air Max 720 and then the Nike Air Max 95s. The 720s, you're probably not gonna find anymore since I'm pretty sure they stopped selling them, but the 95s you can easily pick up from any retailer. And these bad boys will probably give you a generous half an inch to three quarters of an inch boost. Considering if the majority of the population are walking around and say Converse's to Nike Air Forces. Now the overlord for any person whose growth plates are closed is limb lengthening. This is a surgical procedure which essentially extends the femur bone and is going to put you in a stretcher for probably six months to maybe eight. But hey, if you're someone who's five foot four, you can literally get to five foot nine, meaning average height from mega man lift, just from getting this one procedure done. And I don't know about you, but if I was five foot four, and all I had to do was pay like, I don't know, five grand to get this done. I'd probably save that up for it. Maybe that's just me because I'm giga black build, but you can either do that or just um, cope and feel confident within yourself without having to care about your looks because personality and an abundance mindset and sharing 25 times a day is the most important. Also, I must mention with wearing lifts, I've seen some people in 
real life wearing this stuff. So if you're gonna wear this shit, please do it discreetly because I don't want you looking like a KISS band member. Now moving on to the next one, and I probably got the most questions for this out of anything, and it is jaw maxing. Now the obvious one for jaw maxing is mewing. Now, okay, we get it. Put the tongue in your roof your mouth and then breathe through your nose. Yeah, we get it. Not gonna bore you with the details of mewing. We've heard it a little bit too many times. I see mewing as a recession prevention protocol, not something that's just gonna magically grow you a jawline. The majority of the mewing transformations that I've seen on YouTube, even including mine, are literally just through puberty. My jaw used to be mega recessed and it would literally seep into my neck and not even exist. Now I'd say it's pretty decent and I've got good jawline visibility. But don't be mistaken, these bones have only just grown through puberty. And obviously with the help of me chewing, which by the way, actually isn't cope. If you're gonna chew, you can actually extend the growth of your jaw. But you have to do this over a great amount of time and recruit the masseter muscles as you will. So the way to actually grow bone formation, naturally of course, is to buy mastic gum or just normal gum in general if you can't handle that yet. Then you will notice that your jaw will take on a more square appearance as did mine, unless your muscle insertions are fucking terrible or you just can't grow muscle for some reason because you have some muscle withering disease or something. Now that was masseter hypertrophy, but the next one is jaw fillers, which too many people have thought I've got jaw fillers, which by the way, spoiler alert, I haven't. I haven't done any surgical procedure to my face. This is all natural. Now jaw fillers will do as they say and fill in your jaw. This can either look good or bad, but if you're gonna do this, probably go to someone who knows what they're doing. If that doesn't cut it, then you can get jaw surgery, which is really only used for someone who's been fucked over by braces. I mean, if you're in puberty and you have braces, chances are that you might acquire jaw recession. Sorry to scare you if that's the case, but just doing you a solid here. And then obviously another one that's along with mewing is acquiring mouth state where you're sleeping to make sure you aren't going during your sleep. We've all heard our dads well, except for me, because I don't have a dad. But if you have a father, chances are you've heard him snoring in the middle of the night. So next time you see your dad, assess his side profile and see if he's a recessed subhuman. Now another one that I've got a lot of questions on is eye maxing. Now just a disclaimer, I have not done anything to my eyes. To get these eyes, you have to do this thing called birth maxing. It's called being born with these eyes. But there are some non coat ways to make your eyes look better, just not actually affecting the eye shape itself. You can do eyebrow darkening, which is essential to make your eyes look better, which is essential to to give your eyes a more striking appearance. To grow more eyebrow hairs, you can use a minoxidil, and then plucking all the unwanted extremities that come with that. Like I mentioned before, you can put volufline on your under eyes, but hey, it's mostly cope. If you have giga amounts of upper eyelid exposure, like Killian Murphy, but you don't have that crispy eye color to back it up, then you can employ upper eyelid fillers. And once again, facial harmony does play a factor in this. So just make sure to keep the aesthetic appeal in mind. And also, if you want to change your eye color, you can actually do this with a procedure known as stroma, which will effectively change your eye color by lasering off the amounts of pigmentation in your eye. Now I have to say I would probably go against this purely just for the fact that with limb lengthening you can say oh yeah I just had a second puberty and I uh, grew four inches. Yeah uh, with changing your eye color that's a little bit different. You can't claim that you had a second puberty and that your eyeballs changed color. It does not really work like that. So the only time I would probably do this eye color changing procedure is if you're mentally ill and or you want to go to a different country in Southeast Asian Max for example where having blue eyes is probably a free pass to Asian pussy. Now actually changing the color of your eyes does sound extreme, but what you can do is actually lighten the eye, which is actually shown to be just as attractive, if not more. Now the way you can do this is by acquiring eye drops that are actually made to do this, or just get normal off-brand eye drops that will lighten your eyes anyways. Now one technique that is very unknown and it is called orbiculus oculi hypertrophy, which is essentially hypertrophying the surrounding muscles for the eyeball. You can find tutorials on how to do this exercise on YouTube. I've not tried it myself, nor do I really need to, but what it can effectively do is make your eyes appear more deep set, which is proven to be more attractive. And then obviously getting something such as a canthoplasty or an almond eye surgery is applicable if you want to do that, which can definitely align in the surgery maxing category. And the final one is lean maxing. As I said before, a wise man once said, lean is life. If you are not lean, you are a voluntary celibate. And I say that with passion. If you are fat and you are complaining about not getting women, get off your lazy fat ass and do something about it. Now, if I'm not motivating you, the scriptures of the Gospel of Gandhi have actually provided me with the correct information on how to get across to subhumans that are willingly fat. The prophecy explains, thou shalt not be over 10% body fat if he wishes to enter the gates of Gandhi's heaven. For being over 10% body fat is a sin that should be shunned upon by the society of the PSL gods. So if you don't want to be shunned, 
shunned upon the gates of Gandhi once Judgment Day arrives, you need to lean max. This is not only the easiest way to look max, but it is the best way to look max. By being lean, you're going to develop hollow cheeks, a more defined facial structure. Even your features will probably change as well. You'll have more facial harmony. Literally everything I've just listed on this list does not compare to lean maxing. And I cannot stress that enough. And what I also cannot stress enough is that if you made it to the end of this video and you haven't subscribed or even checked out the Bible of Aesthetics, which is going to be in the top right of the screen right now. What are you doing? Now, of course, if I want to manipulate you into buying my things, I can't be talking down to you like this. So please, please buy my stuff. Please, please buy everything. Buy, subscribe, like, comment, everything. Algorithm. Do everything in your power to give me money. I want money. Obviously joking, but I'm really not. So if you enjoyed the video, do everything I just said before. Mock your past self, and I'll see you in the next one.